Hey, good day. It's Tuesday. It's the day that I sent out a brief video blog. I'll try to keep this about five or six minutes. I'm going to take just a minute or two, and then I'm editing in a portion from Sunday morning service because I think it's real important to reiterate what, what I shared in that message. It was entitled, the sermon was it's called The Sifting in regard to Luke chapter 22, where Peter and the disciples are getting ready to go undergo great trial uh, and, and difficulty because Jesus is going to the cross, and he's warning them. In fact, he says, Satan has asked permission to sift you all, you know, uh, but Peter, when you, when you return, I want you to encourage your brothers. Uh, this time that we're facing right now in our nation is a critical time, and it's an important time for believers, and it's an important time for believers to be strong. It's an important time for a believer, if you're failing, that you don't stay in your failure. The Bible says, you know, a righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll get back up. It's time to get back up. The world needs you. The world needs you filled with Jesus. And the world needs to hear the message of Jesus Christ through your life and through your lips. It's, it's a time in America where we have never been so far from God, I believe, as we are right now in this nation. And the answer to that is Christians getting right with God, spending time with God, and preaching to their friends and their family and their loved ones, the truth, the message of Jesus Christ. God wants to use us. I mean, we really are here probably for such a time as this. When you study the Bible and you look for epidemics or pandemics, you, you only see them in Scripture being used in regard to a judgment uh, as a curse. And so I, I do believe these are times, you know, when judgment's coming and it's just a little sampling. It's, it is not the ultimate end of times judgment. But I believe there's a lot going on right now that, that is, is lending itself towards that and moving in that way. God's been working in your heart and your life, whether you realize it or not. And God has something he wants to do in you. Just as much as God has something he wants to do in our church, you need to realize there's this personal application to your own spiritual life, of how God wants to touch your life and use you. And we are, we are God's vessels to be used right now. Not our preacher, not just our church, but us as individuals. And even though you may be limited in your ability to get out, maybe for physical reasons, uh, there you're living in a modern technological age where there shouldn't be any limitations to you texting, writing, emailing, calling, praying, making a difference, sending scripture, uh, reminding your loved ones that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the hour. People are more prone to pay attention than they have at any other time. I'm not even talking about going out and waving a particular flag for social agenda. I'm talking about lifting up the cross of Jesus Christ and reminding people that there is a God in heaven who loves them. And there is a choice for life, for joy, for peace. And that life is more than this present temporal world, that life is eternal. I want you to listen to just this little three minute, maybe three minute, 20 second clip from Sunday morning sermon about the sifting and how that once we go through processes of, of difficulty and purging and refining of our life, that it brings us out on the other side to present a message of grace and God wants to use us, even though we have fallen flat on our face as the, as the disciples did. God raises us up out of that situation and does something magnificent with our lives. God bless you, and I hope it's a blessing to you. I'll see you Sunday. Now, knowledge isn't much good, folks, if you don't use it to help others. You see, there's a lot of people I've dealt with and problems and deep addictions in their life and sin in their life. It's always, you got you to take them to the cross and know that Jesus forgives all your sins. Those repeated sins, he's ready to forgive those, all right? He paid the price for them. Your sins are forgiven. And now you, he gives you the grace and the strength and the power to live a righteous life. Yeah, there's going to be other failures in other areas as you grow, all right? But you shouldn't still be living in the same hole you've been in all your life. You start moving out. And you know where I've seen so many people walk into victory and experience freedom in their spiritual life? Hundreds, thousands of people I've seen make that kind of decision to walk into victory in their life and start being used by God. Then I see so many others who prayed prayers and cried tears and been at the altar and finally just like, like, like Judas walked away and gave up. You say, what's the big difference? What, where's, that, where's, that, where's the mark of difference there? I think it's right here what Jesus is saying. Peter, when, once you repent, you go encourage your brothers. The difference is this. You get a passion, not just for Jesus and a joy that your sins have been forgiven, but a ministry, a story, a testimony is developed. And that is used now 
to encourage others, to make a difference in somebody else's life. It's, in other words, sin is what? It's all about you, right? You, you, the pleasure of sin for the season, the joy of self-indulgence, the old nature just sucks on it and drugs it in and takes it, you know, and just breathes it in and, and lavishes in it until you just finally get broken one day. Say, Lord, I need forgiveness, and I'm just sick of living this way. And you get broken, and you, you, you're aware of your sinfulness, but you also become aware of the grace of God, the blood of Jesus, the cross, all right? What he did for you so that you could be free. But if that doesn't lead you to a passion for others, and you stuck here, well, well, God's blessed me, what God's done for me, I've enjoyed what God's done. And it's just, it, now it's just you, it's, just, it's about you, it's yourself still. You will soon find yourself back in the same old pit. That's just the way it works. As long as your life is about you, what I can get, where I can go, what I can enjoy, how I can be blessed. And that's why that, that's why that gospel, it's a, it's a pseudo gospel message that's out there today of the prosperity, health, and wealth group. That's why it's so popular because people are carnal and they love that message. All right. Because it's all about them and all about them getting more and all them about being better and all them about getting stuff. Bless me, bless me. I don't care about others, just bless me. But when a person really gets broken and life becomes passionate about the Lord and others. I mean, when we talk about love, God love people, reach the world, that's where we have to move to or we'll be back in the same hole. We'll become carnal. We'll get satisfied. We'll sit in church, listen to sermons, do all these things. But we won't go make a difference in the world. We won't change the, the environment. We won't, we won't make a difference in the culture. This is what's so dangerous about religiosity. We come to church. We pay our tithe. We sing our songs. We go through the motions. We do all the right things. We say the right words. We learn the terminology. I mean, we got that evangelical jargon down. But yet, we don't make a difference in a lost world. What a waste. What a waste.